I want to take a detour for a little while into acoustics. Sound waves and modes of sound are a really great way to investigate some of the things we've been talking about with strings. So this is how your ear works. This is a cutaway of your ear. The sound comes in here through your ear canal and bumps into this eardrum, which vibrates backwards and forwards and jiggles these bones around, the smallest bones in your body. And these push on some fluid that sits inside this curled up structure a spiral structure called the cochlea. And the cochlea is where all the action is if you're a physicist because this is where the sound is turned into signals that then travel through your nerves into the brain. Now this long sort of pink layer here which is on either side of the red and yellow parts is called the basilar membrane. And this is the next thing we're going to look at. If we unroll this and look at the structure of the basilar membrane, it's something like this. Where the sound comes in, the basilar membrane is narrow and it's stiff. And as you go along the basilar membrane to the other end, it's wider and looser. Now what that means, if you imagine this is like a harp, each of these black lines might represent a string on the harp. The longer strings with lower tension have a lower frequency. If you look at the equations for the frequency of modes, you'll see why. The lowest modes with n equals to 1, which will be the ones you're exciting the most, will have a lower frequency at this end and a higher frequency at this end. So if the sound comes here and a high frequency sound comes in and the basilar membrane vibrates at this end, this is then detected by some nerves attached to this end of the basilar membrane. In fact, the basilar membrane has thousands of nerves connected all the way along and each one of these different nerves detects motion in the basilar membrane and in this way the nerves actually sense the different frequencies which is why the human ear is sensitive to pitch. If we compare this to our visual system in our eyes we can sense essentially three different colors. We have cone cells that detect red, green and blue light. So we have three primary colors. With the auditory system that detects sound we don't really have primary sounds we can detect continuously through the audio spectrum and our ears typically hear from about 20 hertz up to 20 kilohertz when you're young and the top end of your frequency perception drops off as you age. Now the function of the basilar membrane was discovered in the 1950s and Georg von Bergesi won the Nobel Prize for his work in 1961. If you want to see what the, a real cochlea looks like it's something like this. this, is a cutaway of a cochlea. The basilar membrane lies along here and all of these black bits here, these are the nerves connected to the basilar membrane and it's cut up into three different pieces here. The total length, if you unrolled all of these three pieces here that are actually connected together, is about 34 millimeters. Now the structure of the basilar membrane and the cochlea lends itself really well to something called a cochlear implant. The reason why some people lose their hearing is that when the sound comes in and hits the cochlea, the cochlea does not transduce those sounds into signals in the nerves. For some reason, the sound does not cause the basilar membrane to move in the right way, and so the brain is not sensitive to the vibrations coming in the ear. As long as the nerves are still healthy, however, we can build an artificial system that bypasses the function of the cochlea. This is called a cochlear implant. The way it works is you put a microphone on the outside of the head that listens to sounds. It turns it into an electrical signal that then gets sent to an internal implant. This implant takes the sound and divides it up into different frequencies. And then it sends electrical signals into the cochlea. The high frequencies get sent to the beginning of the cochlea and the low frequencies get sent to the end of the cochlea. Just as the high frequency sounds excite the beginning of the cochlea and the low frequency sounds excite the end of the cochlea. We're doing the same thing now with an electrical stimulus coming from this implant. Now whereas in a healthy system you have thousands of nerves being stimulated continuously along the length of the basilar membrane, the system divides the frequency spectrum up into 20 different channels. So there'll be 20 different electrodes along here that stimulate the cochlea. So in a way you have 20 primary sounds that you can hear, 20 different frequencies that you'll be sensitive to. So it's not as good as a normal healthy ear, but it's a pretty effective system for people who have uh, some types of hearing loss. What we're going to do now is a little experiment with the entire class. I mentioned before that as you age, 
the maximum frequency that you can hear decreases. So when you're born, you can a healthy ear can hear to a, close to 20 kilohertz, and as you get older, that maximum frequency drops. In the next bit of the video, you're going to hear an, a sound with increasing pitch. It'll increase quickly at first, and then the rate of increase will slow down. With each step, it'll become harder and harder to hear as the frequency increases. At the moment, you can no longer hear the sound. I want you to write down that frequency. There's a on the screen, it'll tell you what frequency you're listening to. I want you to write down that frequency, and then we'll enter that into an online poll, and we'll get a distribution of people's maximum hearing frequency.